We all know that no child is born with hate. Hate is taught. We must pay attention to hate speech. What it can do, its capacity to completely destroy, its capacity to completely dehumanize. We need to understand that no society in the world is immune from hate speech. I've just come back from Cox Bazaar in Bangladesh and I spent a um, lot of time among the Rohingya people. His speech was employed to dehumanize the Rohingya, referring to them as subhuman, referring to them as fleas, referring to them as thorns that needed to be removed. And ultimately, that is precisely what happened. By the time they arrived in Bangladesh, they had gone through decades of torture, decades of displacement, decades of dehumanization. And this hate speech that has been employed is something that we must pay attention to. There's a lot of information on Bosnia-Herzegovina, on what happened in Srebrenica. The hate speech that preceded and accompanied the killing of the men and boys in Srebrenica. There is a lot of information on the Tutsi in Rwanda and the moderate Hutu. And the hate speech that was used to describe the Tutsi, how they were dehumanized. We need to look at uh, what happened to the Jews during the Holocaust. We need to see how much his speech was employed to the extent that propaganda really was just spewing out his speech against the Jews, describing them in ways that were designed to make it possible for the ordinary person on the street to just get out and participate in either killing the Jews or reporting on them or getting rid of them. So. My message really to everybody is that genocides happen within communities. Genocides happen to you and me. When a genocide unfolds, the people targeted are people who are ordinary and we must keep paying specific attention to. The narratives that we pass on from one generation to the other, they are narratives uh, in which communities share um, the trauma they experienced and they pass it on to their children. We all know that no child is born with hate, that hate is taught. And uh, we know that the first step of socialization for a child is the family. The child begins to hear about hate from parents, from siblings. They begin to hear about stereotypes about other ethnic communities, about other racial, religious communities, and they begin to understand that there is something called an other, that there is us and then there is the other. We then move to the schools and then we keep being socialized this time by the media, by religious organizations, by uh, political issues that we see happening. At this point, the child is now probably getting into university and they've begun to internalize hate. They have the stereotypes in place, they have the prejudices in place. Then what that means is that that adult who was a child born without hate becomes the person who continues the next circle of socialization. And ultimately what happens is that when people begin to fight each other, especially at the local level, then we'll have a war on our hands and we know how difficult it is to stop wars. So what that means is that we must find ways to keep interrupting that circle of socialization through education, through knowledge, through having friends from different ethnic, racial, religious communities. And what I've learned is that the same tools that are used to spread hate uh, often turn out to be the best tools to counter hate speech. So, for example, the cell phone, it's become a tool that's almost indispensable to many people. 
and it's also become a tool in which hate speech is spread through social media. The same tool can be used to counter hate speech. Social media, it's still an extremely useful tool of engagement. We just need to know how to speak to the issues that people need addressed. We must have conversations with our children and tell them not to fear difference and tell them that difference is a really good thing. It's the perspectives that each brings to the table are perspectives that you would never hear if you just stayed with people who look and speak like you.